what would happen if I only had one lens. In my chats, I speak about simplifying your photography in general. So no matter what the topics are, in general, I always try to, you know, make it easier and quicker to get photographs, to, you know, really make it enjoyable and keep the focus on taking the photographs, on the enjoyment of photos without getting bogged down into all the technical and other details. This is really about my personal photography, about your personal photography and about a lens and gear that you shoot with for your project. Minimizing your gear is really good for your creativity. It really pushes you further. So if you want to know more about what I think about that, you can go and watch that episode. Using one lens only at a time will really help you master your gear. And if this is something uh, that you are striving towards, then stick with me. So let's have a look at why I think the 23 F2 from Fujifilm is my lens of choice that I would use if I had to make this decision. It is simply my experience that I want to share with you in having shot with one focal length or even with different gear over a long period of time and having gone back to look at what the lenses that I shoot most with and maybe even surprisingly so, um, this is what I've discovered is my 23 F2. But before I go into the details why I think that is, let's just have a look um, at a couple of different genres that I've shot with it, just to show you um, what this lens can do and what I've shot with it and the images that I um, you know, like, so I've, I've chosen a few, not to really go into details about those photographs, but to show you that when it comes to landscape photography, which I shoot in my personal time, um, it is really versatile and it gives me really good results. When I travel, which I love, and I'm sure a lot of you out there um, use your gear in travel photography as well, the lens is extremely versatile because it's so small and you know, easy to carry around with and so robust. It is perfect for travel photography. So when I go out and travel, there's lots of different ways I, you know, use the lens, be it on sightseeing or, you know, on the roadside, um, encountering different uh, scenarios um, or, you know, just capturing um, something essential about, you know, having been out traveling. This image here, for example, uh, which is so eye-catching because of all the different colorful flags, was actually shot um, from a moving vehicle on the highway. <laughs> so uh, having a small, fast lens really helps in capturing all sorts of different scenarios and uh, scenes like this, for example. But these are not the only um, scenes or genres, I should say, um, that I've used this lens in. Something that's maybe not so straightforward to think about is close-ups. It is by no means a macro lens. During my travels, I encounter lots of different small details which I like to capture. And by using only one lens, you know, I test how well um, this particular lens performs and you can have a look yourself. Um, I love capturing different uh, flowers when I'm out and about or in different scenes, just to see, you know, um, what different kinds of flowers I encounter in different areas where I am. And it gives me the flexibility, um, despite not being a macro lens, that I can really, you know, get quite close and get and capture some details. Like here, for example, this is, you know, a really small flower. This is no bigger than, you know, uh, the diameter of the lens itself. Uh, but it really captures this really nicely and you know I appreciate that being able to do that with the same lens that I shoot everything else with when I'm um, shooting food um, for the gram <laughs> as we all do or a lot of us um, it you know can do that really well also so whether it's from overhead um, or maybe from different angles uh, a little bit close in or further out um, it is a really good 
lens that you can use. Uh, this um, picture here, um, I wanted to just point out that it was just me being out and about. I wasn't going out to take this photograph. Um, I happened to drink this beer, which was very tasty indeed. <laughs> and I enjoyed the scene and the scenery. And what I love so much about it is because it is more on the wider side, I get a lot of the environment in the background in the shot, which for me in this particular case really makes the shot. And at the same time, it is fast and easy to get to this um, result. And then maybe even less likely uh, for this relatively wide lens um, to shoot is um, environmental portraits. And this is particularly in, you know, for my personal use, uh, but also, you know, during my work, I also use this lens for exactly that same reason. Uh, I, however, want to highlight um, what I mean with this particular image, because it is a close-up it, you can definitely see there's a person and you can see the whole scene in it, but you can capture something uh, that's different and really creative. And I love that very much. So as you can see, it is an extremely versatile lens. Um, the, the lens makes my camera very compact. Um, so I am quick and easy to you know, be able to ready to shoot. Um, it is weather resistant, which is a huge bonus when you, especially when you're traveling. You know, just being able to shoot all these different genres uh, makes it, you know, a really attractive lens. And on top of that, um, it is very affordable. It is really the the focal length and the versatility that I want to, you know, highlight, which is uh, why it is my lens of choice. So how does this affect you? When you shoot with one lens, um, it makes you much faster and flexible in shooting different, um, you know, capturing moments or different scenes because you're always ready to shoot and you, um, you know, don't need to change a lens. You know exactly how um, your lens works and that will help you capture better images. It will teach you to zoom with your feet when you're shooting with the prime lens. It is something that is hugely beneficial, um, not only when you're starting out in photography, but in general, it will help you to know um, what distance, what focal length uh, this lens is. You will be able to see what you will be able to capture with one lens without... Um, without having the camera in front of your eye, you will get a feel for, you know, already how far away you need to be from your subject in order to capture what it is that you want to have in the frame. And that will help you a great deal with getting great results faster and, um, you know, having more fun in capturing uh, those images. It will also help you to really focus because you will only have this one focal length so there is no distraction about, you know, zooming, about com com you really can focus on your composition. So that will also help you in improving, um, you know, your photography and getting better results first time around. And again, it will also help you um, become more creative because as we um, control and put boundaries towards what we can use and the gear that we have at hand, the more we need to think out the box and solve the problem of how I get the shot that I want with the gear that I have, which is an extremely valuable lesson to learn. So where should you start? If you have been shooting for a while and you have a um, catalog of images available, um, go back into this catalog and filter by your focal length and see um, what are the images that you shot with a specific focal length the most. So you will, you know, you will probably be surprised. I myself did this um, a long time ago and I was surprised because I would have thought that because I like the 56 mil, for example, so very much that I would have shot a lot more images with it. But as it turns out, I didn't. And this is how I came about um, the 23mm. 
because the majority of my images that I shoot for myself are shot with a 23. Go and find which one of those focal lengths is yours and which one is the, the one that you shoot most of your images with. Maybe you only have a handful of images that are your favorites. And then you can also see what focal length these are shot with and then um, get to your focal length that you should use that way. If you don't have any of these available to you, my recommendation is that you start out with either a 16 um, or an 18 mil, a 23 or a 35 mil. So depending on your brand and uh, manufacturer that you, um, that you shoot with, you will find that lens that fits into these focal lengths and you know, that is a very good starting point uh, for you. And so here is my challenge to you. I want you to try shooting with your favorite lens only. And then I want you to take this lens and shoot a lot of different genres. I want you to go and shoot landscapes so that you can learn about hyperfocal distance, about you know your depth of field, or shoot portraits because um, that will teach you composition, it will teach you to deal with people and to create environmental images maybe. It will teach you what you want in the scene, what you want out the scene, and it will teach you everything um, you will want to learn about this particular lens. And then I want you to use uh, the images that you've shot and curate them and really have a look and see uh, what different kinds of images you can uh, shoot with this lens. And you will probably also see how you progress in the way that you shoot. Um, this all will contribute into you mastering your lens and really honing down onto um, you know, learning everything there is to learn about this one particular lens. And this will be a great step in you know, a step forward for your creativity and towards mastering something new.